Scenario, you're invited to a Jane Austen themed tea party and it's tomorrow and you have nothing to wear. Or perhaps you're invited to a Regency fair or maybe a Renaissance fair but you wanna buck the Renaissance fashion trend and go in a Regency dress instead. Or maybe you're one of the many people who commented on my wrap shirt video that you would rather see a Regency dress tutorial. Or maybe you just wanna dip your toes into the vast and exciting world of historical fashion and you wanna start small because eventually you would like to make things like the Regency era is a great place to start. It is pretty simple. It requires the least amount of fabric of pretty much any historical era, with the exception of like, Adam and Eve. Now, this Regency dress won't be entirely historically accurate. For instance, we will be using sewing machines on it and elastic, which wasn't around back then, but elastic makes it automatically simpler because you don't have to fit yourself as well and it expands so you can share the dress with your friends. I don't know, my friends don't really like playing dress up though. Um, they stopped liking playing dress up when we were like 12, which was um, really inconvenient because that's when I started sewing a lot of costumes. So I just pretty much play dress up by myself. I do have one friend who is down to clown though, and she is gonna be making this dress alongside me. And she is a beginner, so that will show you just how simple this dress is. Cue Courtney. Courtney, what's your favorite movie? The new Cinderella movie. <laughs> Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Uh, What's your favorite movie that came out in 2005 with Karen Knightley in it? Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Describe your sewing experience. I made a skirt and a tote bag and a little headband for 4-H with my grandma, but I really didn't do any of it. She pretty much sewed the whole thing. That one got me second place, so. Courtney and I are both going to be making Regency dresses. Mm -hmm. Courtney is not a super experienced sewer, but has some no. experience. Uh, okay, one. <laughs> one experience. Didn't do any of it. One time, okay. But I think that she can do this. I think we're gonna be able to complete this in a day. Actually, it's already like four o'clock. Right? Yeah, it's like four. So. so let's see if we can complete this in like half a day. We also yeah. have to make a Walmart trip first, so. So I feel like I need to explain the reason we're going to Walmart and not Hobby Lobby or Joann's or something is just because I was at Walmart yesterday and I saw like this whole bin of clearance fabric. Okay, so Courtney thinks she likes this one. We did a little scan on Pinterest to make sure there is precedent for a striped Regency dress. We found some. I am really liking this. Okay, so we weren't really sure about Courtney's length from shoulder to foot, and the lady didn't have any measuring tape in her desk, so we had to go by what we knew her height was and subtract her head to neck uh, ratio thing, and um, it, it was a mess. But I got it figured out, and I'm about to make it a whole lot easier on you. So if you're an average size female, you're going to want to get a piece that's three and a third yard long. And if it's 44 inches wide, that will be perfect. If you're extra tall, get a piece that is three and a half. Whichever height you are, you're going to want to get a second piece of fabric cut. Now, if you want long sleeves for your dress, you're going to want to get three-fourths of a yard. If you want three-quarter length sleeves, you're going to want to get half of a yard. And if you want short sleeves, just get a fourth of a yard. Next, make sure you get yourself an elastic that is not too thick, but not too thin either. Maybe a fourth an inch. Now, if you want to be more historically accurate, or if you just prefer discomfort and inconvenience, you can use some sort of cotton cord or ribbon as a drawstring. Now when you get home, you want to unfold that fabric to its full 45 inch width and then fold it in half vertically. Nextly, pretend that you are an extremely wide, unbelievably flat person and draw a neckline according to that thought. Now don't make armpit holes like I did here. Learn from my mistake. Watch what I did with this miniature version of the dress. I just left the sides straight. Now I drew the neckline and then folded it in half to cut it to make sure it would be even on both sides. Now you want the front of the neckline to dip down quite a bit more than the back of the neckline because women of that era were apparently not familiar with the phrase modest is hottest. And the easiest way to do this is to splay the whole dress out and then fold it in half vert or horse. I will just show you on this miniature dress and hopefully that makes it make more sense. Lay it all out, flip it over, snip, 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 and ta-da! Let's see how Courtney is doing repeating my steps. Now the fabric she bought was 60 inches wide so she was able to cut like a, a child size width off of the side. Then she folded what she had left in half, perfectly repeated my armhole mistake, and cut the neckline. For the next step, take your dress to the ironing board, intending to press the neckline down a half inch all the way around. Halfway through though, get sick of it because let's be real, that is a huge butt neckline, and decide to wing it instead. Take your dress to the sewing machine and just use your logic. Or you know, you could also pin it down first. Just make sure when you sew it, you leave space enough for your elastic to fit through.
Here's a little clip of me completing this step on my miniature dress. And here's a clip of Courtney and I completing this step at the same time. Hashtag twinning. So we were going to stay focused and make sure we got those dresses done tonight. And we probably still will. Mm -hmm. But he came home and recommended Chipotle. So. Mm. so we are going back to Walmart because I forgot to get that extra three fourths. But this is a different Walmart. They might not even have it. So. Update. They had it. For this next step, you're going to want to use pinking shears. If you don't have pinking shears, try cutting the fabric by ripping at it with your teeth. Cut a long strip, long enough to cover the back and front of the waist of your dress. Now to create that empire or en pied waistline, you're going to want to place that strip of fabric relatively close to the neckline. It should hit just below the bust. Pin that strip in place all across the front. You might want to fold the dress in half just to make sure it meets in the same spot on both sides. Now repeat the same process with another strip of fabric on the back, but just make sure it lines up with the piece that you put on the front. So then you are going to sew all along the top and bottom of that strip of fabric to create a channel for your elastic. Next, sew up the sides, but don't sew that area where your channel is. Just, just hop on over it, like a bullfrog hopping over a tortoise. Now if you didn't make those armpit holes, like you shouldn't have, just stop sewing about 11 inches away from the top. I know that doesn't make sense with this clip because I'm sewing downwards, but that's because I made a mistake, remember? Next, get the size of your elastic right by wrapping it around your neckline and your waist about how big you want it to be, and then just snip it. Next, use a safety pin at the end of a piece of elastic to thread it through your neckline. You're probably going to have to cut a hole to, you know, descend in, into the neckline channel. And then thread the elastic through the waist, but there should already be openings for that. And when your elastic has emerged, tie both ends together. Is this your favorite part so far? It is. It's the least stressful. <laughs> Another variation you could try is cutting a little keyhole in the front and stringing a ribbon through and tying it on the outside. Awkwardly measure your armpit hole opening. Now draw a general sleeve shape and make sure it's just a few inches bigger than what you measured, okay? Now, don't be annoying about this. Don't think about it too hard. Just slightly too big, okay? Now with your dress and your sleeve piece inside out, you're going to pin them together, right sides together, the top of the middle of the sleeve with the top of the middle of your shoulder. Now when I make sleeves, my rule of thumb is I always make them large and in charge. I make them way too big because you can always try it on and take it in all the live long day, but it is so painful to add more fabric. Now if you have allotted yourself a few extra inches on the top, you can sort of do some folds and puckers on the back of your sleeve. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more mobility and it's just a little facet of a lot of Regency dresses, uh, something you would see a lot on them. I don't know if I used the word facet correctly. If you have never sewn a sleeve onto anything before, I would just recommend that you get on YouTube and look up a video specifically about sleeve making. Although, maybe you don't have to because Courtney had never watched a sleeve making video and had never made a sleeve before and she kind of breezed through it like a pro. Uh, okay. <clears throat> now if you've never made a sleeve before, I think I recommend doing the short sleeves. They are actually so easy and fun, it's angering. It's actually not. I actually don't really get angry. Anyways, just make this general sleeve shape a little bit bigger than your armpit hole opening. Uh, the shape will be sort of like this. Oh, it looks like a headboard, doesn't it? Like for a bed? That's not what we're making though. Maybe someday. I'm just kidding. Never. I will probably never make a headboard. Anyway, flip the edges under about a half inch or however big your elastic is and then sew it on up. Now after you have your two sleeves cut, don't put the elastic in yet. First bunch it up and pin it to the shoulder of your dress and sew it on there right sides together. I hope this makes sense. If not, oh, I'm sorry I failed you. Um. So then, now you are going to sew up the armpit part of it, and then you're going to thread your elastic through. Oh my gosh, this is such a cute little girl dress. I really was hoping I would be able to find a three-year-old um, <clears throat> for the day of to model this dress, but I don't stay tuned. You'll see what happens. Now, if you made the regular, regu regular, your, why can't I say that? Regular sleeves, just roll and hem them under. Okay, so normally a hem is something I would iron first, and then maybe hand sew even. Uh, but you know what, it's already past 11, so we're just gonna wing it. And wing it I did with a rolled hem, and that was the last thing that I did on my dress that night, and the only other thing I did was I cut this piece of gauze to make a little fichu, which is like a, a neckerchief thing. And at that point in the evening, we were done, and we felt like frolicking. Doesn't it make you want to frolic? Let's do it. <laughs>
And because I just couldn't get enough of this project, I made another version of the dress the next day by folding the edges of a bedsheet into the center, cutting out a neck hole in the back, and then hand sewing the shoulders up all bunchy-like. And then for the waist, I did a drawstring waist using a ribbon tied at the front. Other than that, the steps were the same. If you want some accessories to really complete that Regency look, you could make a Spencer, which is a Regency style jacket. Uh, just find a jacket at Salvation Army and cut it short. I've made a Spencer once out of a pair of dress pants that I'm pretty sure my brother was about to donate to Salvation Army, and it turned out pretty cute, so I wanted to make another one and film the process, but I'm doing it a lot quicker this time by just kind of cutting a jacket short and adding some decorative stitches in the back. Now the decorative stitching just instantly makes it look like you put way more work into it than you actually did, and it makes it look more historical-y. Uh, now the shirt, jacket, the jacket thing that I got came with a pair of pants, okay, some silky pants. And I cut those off, and maybe someday I'll wear them as shorts. And I used a strip cut off of those to make a bias tape to put along the bottom of my Spencer. Don't I sound so historical when I say Spencer? Pretty sure that's the name of one of Tony Hawk's sons, if I remember correctly. And lastly, I hand sewed on one of those little closure things that I took from the bottom of it onto my little bias tape piece. Oh, and ripped out the shoulder pads, because this ain't no 80s. Now, to make a cute little muffin hat turban thing, I got the band exactly my head size, and then I cut the closest thing I could to a circle with the fabric that I had. Then I sewed elastic all around the perimeter of it, tugging as I went. Okay, you guys have no idea how many takes it took for me to say perimeter right. And next I sewed on that little hat band that I wrapped around my head earlier. Yep, remember that? Good times. Oh, but before I did that, uh, I sewed a little ruffle onto it. I'm sorry, I didn't think you'd find that important. And then I sewed this little tiny band on so that I could stick a feather in it. Yes, a feather is pretty much necessary. To get a feather, simply go out your back door into your backyard into your duck pin and get one off the ground. Don't pluck it from the duck as it will hurt them. If you decide to hand sew trim onto your hat at church, make sure you sit in the balcony so that you don't distract anyone. And also, don't let yourself be distracted. Still take notes. Here was a good one I got that Sunday. People are more important than plans. And now, the grand reveal with a special guest, Courtney's little sister Ruthie, who had been taking a nap and then was abruptly awoken, told to put on this dress and curl the front of her hair. If you'd like to know how to make the bonnet she's wearing, or as she called it, cone of shame, I could make a separate video all about bonnet making, and don't worry, it would not be nearly as long as this one. Pro tip to giving your outfit that Jane austen -y flair is to pair it with a shawl. They are relatively easy to find at thrift stores. Another great way to sell the costume is to say Regency-like things that you would hear in a Jane Austen novel. I do wish we could find some wealthy, marriageable men. Our lives would be vastly improved. Don't you think? If you're really cut for time, an easy Regency hat would just be wrapping a cloth around your head turban style, and if you want to get full enjoyment out of your Regency costume, I highly recommend frolicking. You won't regret it. One, two, three. That's bad for me. Once again, thank you so very kindly for watching my video, uh, and thank you to Courtney for making this dress. Didn't she do lovely for her first historical sewing project? Courtney, how did you find your experience? Uh, it was stressful, for sure, but um, very, uh, very nice at the end. Any one of these costume pieces you could make in a day. In fact, you could probably kick your butt into gear and make them all in one day. Anyways, um...